gave his son to die for you. It's what we've been going through for the last two weeks, and we got today and next week looking at John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And it simply comes through Jesus. It is great to see you today. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Let's worship him today. Let's pray. Father, we want to thank you for your goodness and your love to us. Thank you, the Lord, all of the junk of life we can bring and just lay at your feet. We can cast all of those cares. We can roll them over onto you because you care for us. Lord, I just pray that you touch each one today. The Lord, as we open up and as we worship and as we exalt you, Lord, may your name be lifted up and may every heart and life be touched. In Jesus' name, amen.
bread represents his body. And through his body and the stripes that he took, I think it's Peter that wrote, you were healed by those stripes. You were healed. Father, we thank you today that through what Jesus, your son, did for us, through that great love that you had for us and the love that he has for us, he took those stripes so that we could be healed. Lord, we thank you for that healing today. And Lord, there are some that are needing healing. Lord, there are some that, Lord, I've been told about that are suffering with the virus. And, Lord, they need a miracle today. Lord, we just ask for that miracle. We ask for your touch. Well, there are some here today that, Lord, are going through sicknesses and treatments for sickness. And, Lord, they have family members that are suffering. Lord, we just pray right now for your healing to manifest in their life. And, Lord, Lord you declared that we are healed. So, Lord, today as we eat this bread, we do this in remembrance of you, proclaiming your death until you return. In Jesus' name, amen. Take and eat the bread. Juice represents his blood. It's the new covenant his blood and because of his blood our sins aren't just covered and you got to do it every year because your sins are washed away and you are the righteousness of God. Father we thank you for what Jesus did for us at the cross and through that Lord we have hope today. Through that Lord based on what you've done and our simple belief in you we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. We are perfected forever, Lord, even though you continue to work in us. We thank you for that today. Lord, today we drink this in remembrance of you, proclaiming your death until you return, looking forward to that day when we'll drink with you in your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. Take a drink. I'm going to ask him to sing this chorus twice more. Simply think about what that nobody loves you like Jesus does. Nobody will ever love you like Jesus loves you. Our children can go down for Super Church. And I know that they're going to have an exciting time down there. One of these days, I'm just going to go down with them and just leave you all up here. Some days I could use a snack. <laughs> and it probably wouldn't look very good if I had one up here and I didn't pass you one out. Uh, you just want to hit on a couple of things. Starting in two weeks, uh, we're going to be looking at Jesus the same yesterday, today, and forever. You say, well, Pastor, you talk about Jesus a lot. Good. We can talk about a lot of stuff, but if it ain't in the context of Jesus, who Jesus is and what he's done for us, I think we've missed it. So we're going to be talking about him the same yesterday, today, forever. And I don't know if you got it as you came in, but you'll definitely get one on the way out. Um, it's going to be probably nine weeks. It could be ten. Pastor, talking about Jesus. Yes, for 
10 weeks almost. At least nine. And one of those in the middle is going to be Easter Sunday. Do you realize we're like seven weeks away from Easter? If you if you haven't started inviting somebody, you better get to it. Okay? You you start, maybe it's six or seven. We're, it's April the 4th. Okay, okay, so maybe it's six. I was counting today. So we got six or seven, whatever, it's coming soon. So invite somebody. If you tell me, Pastor, I've got 18 people come, we'll do a second service so we don't overflow. So we did take some chairs out, and we're still um, socially distanced and all of that. So um, well, that's coming up. We're going to be looking at many aspects of who Jesus is. And I want you to understand, you can trust your life to Jesus Christ. Like that song says, nobody loves you like he does. And as we've been looking in John 3, 16, God so loved the world. You're part of the world that he gave Jesus for you and me. So we're going to be doing that starting on the first Sunday in March. If you haven't picked up your Hebrew study, pick it up. I want you to be involved. Write your name down. And please, let me know if you're going to be Zoom or in person. Because when I set everything up, I want to make sure i got enough chairs. Zoom, I don't have to worry about chairs because i got my chair, you got your chair. But I'd just like to know who's going to be there with me. And, and here's the neat thing. Say you miss um, one of the in-person studies on Sunday night at 5. You can catch up on Zoom during the week, and we'll, do, we'll be back and forth. So if you know you got to miss, go to Zoom. If you're, going to, if you're going to miss a Zoom, you can come on Sunday, whatever is best for you. And if somebody told me, they said, well, Pastor, you did say we are going to have work. Well, here's a question, and here's a question. I had to read, the first one is on Hebrews chapter 1, verses 1 through 14. I had to go back and read that. I read the passage, started answering questions. Well, where's that at? Went back and reread it. Okay, I meant, where's that one? Went back and reread it. But listen, I give you a week to do it. Most of your teachers in school did not give you a week to do one assignment. I didn't give my kids a week first assignment. It's like, get this done tonight and bring it in tomorrow. Or you get a zero. Listen, I'm not going to give you zeros. So if you miss one, that's okay. If I miss one, that's okay. We're going to do it together. Okay, we're doing it together. So some of these were tough for me. And it didn't come with an answer key. I didn't get the sheet like I did as a teacher. It always came with the answer key. This didn't. So I'm making the key, and you're helping me. So we're going to study it together. So pick that up today. Pick it up today so you can be ready for next week. I don't want you to try to do it 30 minutes before we start. I think you'll struggle to get it done in 30 minutes. Or you might give us some answers that we have fun with. Either way. Uh -oh. my, my students in, in school, they used to give me answers, and we used to have fun with them. I said, I'm not making fun of you. I'm just laughing with you. As everybody else did. So, so today we're going to be looking at um, the meaning of John 3.16. We're going to continue with that. We've been doing that the last two weeks. And today's message will be titled, You Believe. God gave was the first week. God, well, first week was God love. God loves you so much that God Gave. He gave his very best, which, which was his son, Jesus. He died on the cross. We went through and saw, seen what that did in communion today. But then here's, here's the next step. You believe. You have to believe. It's, a, it's one thing to know and believe, yeah, Jesus lived this and Jesus did this. But do you believe for yourself? in your heart, that he did it for you? Have you received it as for you? So we're going to look at that today. But before we do, I'm going to ask you to stand one more time. Let's say our declaration together if we can. And say it like you mean. I believe you do. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I am deeply loved, highly favored, lavishly supplied, and completely protected by my Heavenly Father. I am no longer burdened with guilt, shame, or condemnation, and every benefit of God's grace is mine. I am who he says I am, and I have what he says I 
I have. Amen. You may be seated. So today you believe. Let's start with John 3.16 and let's read this out loud together. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Over the course of the last two weeks, I've been sharing with you what some other translations say. In, in the Message Bible, it says this. This is how much God loved the world. He gave his son, his one and only son, and this is why. So that no one need be destroyed. By believing in him, anyone can have a whole and lasting life. And then in the New Life version, it says it this way. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son. Whoever puts his trust in God's son will not be lost, but will have life that lasts forever. Over the course of these weeks, we, as we read these different translations, some things are always familiar. God loves, God gave, and you believe. And because you believe, what does it say you have? Everlasting life, you live. So that's a little tease for next week, you live. Next week we're looking at you live. But you must believe that Jesus is who he says he is. You must believe what Jesus did is for you. You must believe that no matter what happens, he loves you. And Jesus came just for you. A childlike belief that Jesus is the Son of God and he's the answer for our lives. What does it mean for us to believe in God? In 1 John 4, 16, it says this, And we have known and believed the love that God has for us. You must believe in that love. God is love. And he who abides in love abides in God, and God in him. We have known and believed the love that God has for us. We must know and believe that God loves me. He loves you. He loves every one of us. Even on your worst day. God loves you. When you feel like nobody else loves you, God loves you. I believe if we would let that fact really sink in and, and live our life as though we know we're loved by the creator of the universe, think about that. The creator who spoke everything into existence. Everything into existence. Who brings life into man is the same one who loves you unconditionally and will never let you down. He'll never let you down. You may make mistakes. You may make wrong turns. You may spend money unwisely. But God loves you. He's able to make all things work together for good. To those who love him, they're called according to his purpose. When and where do we apply the fact that we know that we believe and, and he loves us? There's, there's some questions today I want to explore. And we do, I want to start with a verse that's kind of familiar with many of you. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 through 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. I believe that believing is a wholehearted trust. If we're going to really believe in God, in Jesus, and what he's done, in God, and in his love for us, it's got to come from down inside. It's got to come from not just from our intellect. There's a lot of people who believe that Jesus was a real person, that Jesus was a teacher, that Jesus did die on the cross, but they don't believe that Jesus was the Son of God, that Jesus was the answer for mankind. We've got to believe that down in our heart. The Hebrew word in this passage of Scripture for heart is the word lay, which means the heart, but it's also used figuratively very widely for the feelings, the will, and even the intellect. Likewise, for the center of everything. Your heart, and one of these days I want to get into this, your heart belief. Your heart is the center of everything that you believe. In a time of trouble, the Bible tells us that out of the 
Out of the abundance of the heart, what does the mouth do? Speak. When we get that, that news, when we go through that hard time, when we go face that struggle or that mountain, what comes out of us? What is it that we speak? Is it faith? Is it joy? Is it peace? Is it worry? Is it discontent? What is it? From the heart, the mouth speaks. That heart is that center of everything. It's not this trust is not just an emotional trust. Well, when you're high, you're, you're feeling great one day, and you're high up there, boy, I trust God. But then when you get down low and you're going through the, the valley or the hard times, well, I just don't know. My faith isn't big enough. I want you to understand something. If you're relying on your faith, you're relying on something that will fail you. That's right. Your faith will fail. Well, Pastor, you don't know about my faith. I've got big faith. Go through the hard time, and your faith will seem so small. Your faith will waver. You'll put your faith in your efforts at times. It's not about your faith. It's simply about the faith you have and who, and who you have your faith in. And your faith has simply got to be in Jesus. Do you believe him? It's a total trust. This trust is a total trust. See, in Psalms 37, verse 5, it says this. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. In the Hebrew, that word commit is the word halal, which means to roll over. See, in the Young's literal translation, which is more um, exact or whatever, it says this, Roll on Jehovah thy way, and trust upon him, and he worketh. When that scripture says, Cast all your cares upon the Lord, for he careth for you, it's talking about rolling your burdens over him. I'm sorry, there's just some burdens too heavy that I can't cast them on him like we think about casting. There's sometimes I just got to lay down and let them roll off on your head. He says, commit your ways. Roll your ways over in Jehovah. Trust him completely. And what's he going to do? He's going to take care of you because why? He's working. He works. He's working on your behalf. He's taking care of you. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Now, I want you to understand something. That is hard to do at times. Now, I, like I said, if you're basing all of this on your faith and you've got big faith, you're going to fail and you're going and things are not going to turn out great. You've got to simply roll things over on him and just say, Lord, I can't. I'm going to let you and I'm going to trust you. I mean, we've got things in life that we can't take care of. I'm sorry. I've faced things in just my 36 years. <laughs> I, I got to hang on to that 36. Yeah, I got to hang yeah. on to that because here in a couple months, well, month, well, yeah, a couple months, I'm going to be celebrating the 17th anniversary of my 36th birthday, and I'm going to have a blast for that day. Okay, let's. But you know what? There's going to be things that we just can't handle. There's going to be things that you can't even carry, so you can't cast or whatever. You just have to lay down and let them roll off on him, and trust him. Trust him. You can't do it. Don't trust in yourself to be able to do it. We roll into him all that we are, all we hope to be, and all that we have. We believe in him for every area of our lives. It's not based on what we're able to do, but it's what he has done. We can't lean on our, ourselves or our understanding. See, the second part of that scripture was, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Don't we like to lean on ourselves a lot? If it's going to be, it's up to me. There's nobody better to do it than I'm going. Than I can do it, so I better just go ahead and do it. I'm a self-made man or woman. I don't need any help. I can get there by myself. Then we get ourselves in so many messes. That's right. That's right. That's right. Or we try to climb the ladder of success only to find when you get to the top, there's another rung, and you don't know how you're going to get up that rung. See, we got to trust <laughs> the Lord. See, in Psalms 27, 4 and 5, it says this. One thing I have desired of the Lord, that will I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret place of his tabernacle he shall hide me. He shall set me high upon a rock. Because you know what? 
I've desired and I'll, that I will seek to dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Why? To behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. When I don't know what to do, when I don't know where to turn, I can't trust myself. What do I need? I need to get in the presence of the Lord. I need to seek him. I need to allow him to work in my life. That's why it says to see the beauty of the Lord, to inquire of his temple. For in the time of trouble, what's he going to do? He's going to hide you. In his pavilion, in the secret place, he's going to hide you. He's got to hide you so you get out of the way. That's right. In some ways, I, I think he's got to hide you so you can't, you don't think you can do it on your own. Let me take care of it. You just go hide away. Roll all of your stuff over me. You just get out of here. I'll set you up on a rock. I'm going to take care of you. Just trust me. Thank you, Jesus. That's what we need. See, like I said before, many of us, many of us were brought up to believe that you can do whatever it is that you set your mind to. I remember years ago, I read an article in the Reader's Digest, and it was, somebody was saying, 10 things that I'd like to say at a graduation. I, he said, I want to be a graduation speaker. And this is in my desire. I want to be a graduation speaker. I want to be one. But the first thing he would tell them, you can't be whatever you want to be. He's like, what? If you don't like the sight of blood, don't tell me you want to be a doctor or a nurse. I don't care what you say. You're not going to be. If you don't like math, you're not going to be an accountant. I don't care how much money you make or how much you want to be. You can't be whatever you want to be. There's just some things. i tell you what. I had a cousin one time that worked for this tower company. He went up these big towers and changed these lights and stuff. I don't care how much money he made. I don't care where he got to travel. I don't care how much, how great that looked to me. I was never going to do that. Because once I get this high, I'm starting to shake. I get a little bit higher, I'm starting to quake. I get a little bit higher, I know I'm going to break. Okay? I, I'm not a heights person. So I don't care what you think I might be. That's why, that's why I don't believe that, that, that God allowed me to be seven foot tall and be able to dunk. I, don't, I think I get up there like, oh no, what am I doing up here? Okay? But here's what he says. You don't have to do it yourself. You can't be anything you want to be. Trust me and I'll put you in the right spot and I'll do the right thing for you in your life. See, we think that when the going gets tough, that the tough get going and pull yourself up by your bootstraps and be a self-made man. Yes, but work hard. Have goals. Have dreams. But here's what I'm saying. Trust in God with all of your heart and lean not on your own understanding. He will take care of you. And he'll put you in place and in a position and take you in the spot that you never would have dreamed because it's all in God's will and God's plan. Our understanding is limited. You know, I think they say that even the smartest people in the world only use like 10% of their brain. 10%. Now, tithing is 10%, but we're just like, we'll go there, okay? But he said 10%. That's, where, that's a number I've heard. And if it's not right, somebody can tell me later or, or something. But I heard something about 10%. It's about what we use. Our understanding is limited. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 says this. He calls the foolishness of God is wiser than men. And the weakness of God is stronger than men. When you trust in God, you're, you're trusting in the one who's the wisest and who knows everything. 1 Corinthians 13, 12 says this. For now we see in a mirror, dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I shall know just as I also am known. Listen, we don't see things very clearly, but when we trust God, he takes care of everything. That's right. He'll take us past, he'll take us down roads that we may never Amen. have thought, but God's able to do that. I like what one pastor said, he'll open doors that no man can shut, and he'll shut doors that no man can open. God can do amazing things. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Lean not in your own understanding. And then what does it say? In all of your ways do what? Acknowledge him. Acknowledge him. See, most of us are desperate to understand. But in so many areas, we must acknowledge that we don't know. And we may never know. We must approve of God's ways, even when we can't comprehend them. He knows the beginning from the end. As we trust in him, we can lean on him and allow him to direct our lives leaning on anything else is a weak foundation that will fall break and leave you wanting 
the foundation of our believing. We're talking about God loves and God gave and you believe. The foundation of our believing is trusting the Lord and leaning on Him. And this isn't a one-time thing. Well, Pastor, you know, I did that back in 1988. No, this is an all-time thing. All the time and every way we're to acknowledge Him. See, when we go into situations and you don't know what to do, you, your first thought will be, Lord, I need your help. When you get up in the morning, your first thing, Lord, I need you today. I've got this, this, and this, and this, and this, and Lord, I need your help today. Maybe today is one of those snow days for you, and you're just going to roll over in bed. Lord, I need you still today to, uh, to direct me and to lead me. When we trust in him in all our ways, we're trusting in him for all of our life. While many find it possible to believe God for salvation, it doesn't stop it. I want you to understand, he came to save your soul, but he came to save you in every area of your life. He came to give you salvation for your whole life, for every area, for all of that. We're to trust him in everything all the time. See, in Romans chapter 1, verse 17, it says this, For in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. You're not going to live by your intellect. You're not going to live by your smarts. You're not going to live by your money and all that stuff. You're going to simply live by faith. Lord, I don't know the end from the beginning. I don't know what tomorrow holds, but I do know this. I will trust you. I will lean on you. I will acknowledge you as my source, and I know you're going to take care of me. That reminds me of a story that I heard many years ago. There was a man who fell off a cliff. But on his, as he fallen off the cliff, almost like a comic strip, it seems like. As he was going down, he grabbed a hold of a branch that was, that was grown out of the side of the cliff. And he's hanging on there, and he's, he's hollering for help, and he says, Is anyone up there? And it says, I, and someone hollers back, I'm here. I am the Lord. Do you believe me? Yes, Lord, I believe. I really believe, but I, don't, I can't hang on much longer, the man says. And God, the Lord hollers back, that's all right. If you really believe, you have nothing to worry about. I will save you. Just let go of the branch. There was a moment of pause. And then, is anyone else up there? <laughs> Aren't we often like that? Lord, I trust you completely. Well, let go and let me do it. Is there anyone else up there? Anyone else? Listen, there is no one else that's going to take care of you. No one else that you can trust in. In all of your ways, acknowledge him. Lean not on your own understanding. Trust him with all of your heart. He will take care of you. He's going to take care of you. You just got to trust him. Look, I got to get me a tissue. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I've got to have a tissue. Okay, now we can move on. Every day of our lives. See, she needed one. Nobody laughed. <laughs> Every day we're, we're like that guy hanging on that branch. Lord, I need you today. We may not acknowledge it, but we do. We do. When you hit that road and you're driving, you need the Lord. When you walk into your workplace, you need the Lord. When you get up and you, and you go to bed, and when you go back to bed at night, you need the Lord to take care of you. Whatever you do, you need the Lord. We don't often have much to hang on to, but you do have Jesus. Hang on to him. Believe in what he has said about you. Believe in what he, he's done for you. Let go, and as, a, as a, the little cliche says, let go and let God. Let him take care of you. We're saved by faith, and we need to live by faith. Right. We build this faith in Jesus simply through the word of God. See, in Romans 10, 17, it says this. So then faith comes by... Hearing, and hearing by the word of God. That word there is Christos. It's the word of Jesus. We need to hear more about Jesus. If you're going to listen to some music during the day, listen to Jesus. I need to cut off ESPN Radio a little bit less and a little bit more and listen a little bit less of the sports and just hear a little bit more about Jesus. Why? He's the one that's taking care of me. It, by, it is by the word of Jesus that we have faith and believe that he, what he has said about us and for us, it was Abraham's faith that was accounted to him as righteousness. We live by faith. Not faith in your faith, but simple faith in Jesus. Now notice what I said there. A lot of times we have faith in our faith. We have faith in how 
big our faith is, how awesome our faith is, and what our faith has done is going to do. No, have faith in Jesus. We believe in Jesus, and faith grows out of that. From that belief and faith, we trust him to direct our lives. He is the only one who can bring us, as the scripture says, to an expected end. See, Jeremiah 29, 11 says this. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. He wrote this to his people back in the Old Testament, but I believe today that God still thinks about you. Do you believe God thinks about you? Do you think he knows about you? Do you believe he has a, a future and an expected end for you? Hey, God's not caught by surprise by what happens in your life. Think about that. God's not surprised. This pandemic didn't catch him by surprise. Just like that financial crisis several years back, and I told you the same thing. He didn't wake up someday and said, Angel, do you see what's going on down there? They're struggling. Finances are bad. How did this happen? He didn't catch God by surprise. He knows everything. But he has a future. He has thoughts about you. He wants to bring you to an end that he has planned for your life. Just trust him. There's no one that can take care of you like you can of those who serve you. D.B. Towner. Many of you have never heard of him. was the director of music at the Moody Bible Institute in Chicago. And in 1886, during an occasion when he was leading singing for D.L. Moody, during a testimony service, he heard a young man say, I am not quite sure. This is what the young man said. I am not quite sure, but I am going to trust, and I am going to obey. He jotted down those words D.B. Towner did and sent them to a minister friend of his who developed the idea into a full hymn. And that hymn is the song, Trust and Obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. See, when we simply trust him and obey, follow him, he brings you to that expectation. Trust and obey him. Trust him. He says, what? Lord, I don't know what to do. Trust him. And then when he directs you, obey and follow him. He wants to direct and lead your life. See, in 1 John, and I don't have this scripture up here. If you want to jot this down and look it up later, these came to me after I put all of this together. But in 1 John chapter 3, 23, it says this, And this is his commandment, that we should believe on the name of his Son, that Jesus, and love one another, as he gave us commandment. This is commandment, we should believe on the name of his Son. We need to believe on Jesus. That's the command. And then in John chapter 6, verses 28 and 29, it says, Then he said to him, What shall we do that we may work the works of God? This is John 6, 28 and 29. What, may, what shall we do that we may work the works of God? And he says this, Jesus answered and said to them, This is the work of God that you believe in him whom he sent. Church, our command and our work is simply to believe in Jesus and what he's done for us, and that he came for us. He died on the cross. He rose from the dead. And today he intercedes for us at the right hand of the Father. And through him we have life. Through him we have meaning in this world. Because of him, I have hope today. Because of Jesus. The truth is Jesus in John 14, 6, it says this. Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The only thing you can place your trust, your belief, and your faith in is Jesus. It's Jesus. Not in anyone or anything else. See, Hebrews 11.1 1 says this in the Message Bible. I like how the Message Bible said it. The fundamental fact of existence is that this trust in God, this faith, is the firm foundation of uh, under everything that makes life worth living. Now think about that. Faith is the foundation under everything that makes life worth living. Listen, at best, sometimes life is hard. Think about that. At best, sometimes life is hard. You've had days that when you lay down at night, you said, oh, I hope I never have another day like that. Sometimes life is hard. But because of our faith in Jesus and what he has done for us, there is a foundation that allows me to get up the next day believing 
that God still loves me and God's still working. No matter what I go through, the foundation of every day has got to be that simple trust and that faith in Jesus that he is taking care of me. And no matter what the world may come at me with me, come against me with, no matter what may happen that day, my faith is still in Jesus and he is still working for me and I will be okay. Because of him, I believe him. Where do you stand today? What is your foundation that you're standing on? If it is anything or anyone but Jesus, it will fail you at some point. This morning, place all of your beliefs in Jesus and trust him to take care of you. I want to close with this passage of scripture. It comes from 1 John chapter 5. Whoever believes that Jesus is the, is the Christ is born of God. What's the basis for our foundation? We have to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. And everyone who loves him who begot also loves him who is begotten of him. By this we know that we love the children of God. When we love God and keep his commandments. For this is the love of God that we keep his commands. And his commandments are not burdensome. What do we see the commandment was? To believe in Jesus. And from that, good works are produced. Our, our faith in him, it allows us to follow him completely. And his commandments are not burdensome, for whatever is born of God overcomes the world. As a child of God, you have been born of God. And this is the victory that has overcome the world. Our faith. Our faith based in who? Jesus. Who is he who overcomes the world? But he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. You face things every day. How do you overcome? Simply by your belief in Jesus. It's not in your smarts. It's not in your money. It's not even in your good looks. It's simply based on your belief in Jesus. God loves you. God gave Jesus for you. And now he asks you simply to believe. To believe. Simply believe what he's done is for you. And everything Jesus did is for you. He loves you so much. Simply put your trust in him. Some of you today are going through some things. Sickness yourself, sickness in your family, financial problems, job situations that are um, not great. Um, you're just going through stuff. But what's the foundation? Your faith. Simply in Jesus. It's that foundation that makes every day work in Him. Trust Jesus. Let's pray. Father, we want to thank you for your goodness to us. <coughs> thank you that we know that you love us. Father, you love us so unconditionally. You love us so passionately. You pursued us. And because of that love, you gave your very best. You gave Jesus to die on the cross for us. And because Jesus came and he fulfilled all of the law, he fulfilled everything that needed to be done for our salvation, we have become children of God. By faith in Jesus, we become children of God. And because of that, we believe. We can believe in all that you've done. We can believe in all that you've said for us and all of this, that the fact that you have our future in your hand. We trust you. Lord, help us today to trust you and to lean not onto our own understanding and all of our ways acknowledge you. And Lord, you direct our path. You bring us to that expected end. Thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for your goodness to us. Thank you that you want so much for us want us just to trust you. Church, with your heads bowed, those that may be watching, I want to ask you a very simple question. Do you know Jesus as your Savior? Have you placed your trust in Jesus? Have you placed your life in his hands and allowed what he did to make you a child of God? According to Romans chapter 10, it says that if, if we'll confess 
and with our mouth the Lord Jesus Christ, and it will believe in our heart that he rose from the dead, because we shall be saved, saved from your sin, saved from eternal damnation and hell, saved from all of them. And he wants to save you in every area of your life. This morning I'm going to pray a prayer, and if you're here, or if you're watching, and you never have accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, I want to ask you to just pray this prayer and mean it as you do. Maybe you've prayed this with us each week. I'm going to ask you to pray it once again. And we're going to pray it together, believing that God is changing hearts. He's changing lives. He's making new children today through what Jesus did. Say, dear Jesus, thank you for loving me. I believe you are the Christ, the Son of God. I believe you rose from the dead. Based on that confession, I am saved. My sins are gone. I'm a child of God. Thank you for loving me. Amen. Would you stand right now? We'll come back in just a few moments and we're going to pray together for whatever maybe you're going through, whatever's happening. We're going to pray about that. But I want you to sing this song with them that says, God loves you. Talking about God loving you.
there are many here today, Lord, some that are listening, Lord, that need to see that goodness in a great way, in a special way today. So, Lord, I ask that you will work in their lives today. Lord, whether it's in sickness, in their homes, in their finances, Lord, in just their, their, their minds, or whatever it may be, Lord, I ask that, Lord, they will see your goodness once again. The Lord, in that darkness, they'll see the light. Lord, in that despair, they'll see hope. Lord, in all of the, the stuff and the anger of life, the Lord, there'll be joy and peace restored today. The Lord, they will know that, Lord, trusting you is the end. The Lord, they will see that, Lord, they can lean on you in a fresh way, direct their lives. Lord, we know that you are our answer. We know that you are our help. The Lord, just touch today. Work in their lives. Work in their hearts. Work in their finances. Work in their families. Lord, work in their minds. Lord, bring, restore, rebuild, and renew today. Lord, we thank you for all that you're doing, for all that you're accomplishing, for all that you're bringing to pass. Church, would you just lift your hands right now? Lord, I just pray right now as they lift their hands. Lord, as an act of surrender, but Lord, Lord, also an act of receiving. The Lord, that you will just bless them indeed. Lord, let your goodness flow over them. Lord, let them see, Lord, things working in their behalf. Let them see things changing in their favor. Lord, let them see that, Lord, you are there. Go before them. Come behind them. Lord, surround them with all of your love and your presence. Lord, let your blessings be on them coming in and going out. Let your blessings be on them no matter what may be happening. Lord, let people see that they are the blessed of the Lord. They are your children, and you are holding them in your hands. Lord, we thank you for what you're going to do today. In this week, we thank you that we are blessed. Lord, cause your face to shine upon us. Lord, give us your peace. Let your blessings be abundant, and let them be real and tangible. And in Jesus' name we pray, and the church says, Amen, Amen. Amen. Do you believe God is good? Yes. Amen. God is good all of the time. And all the time, God is good. I want you to say that for us again. Don't forget, as you leave today, drop your offering in. Sign up for the Bible study, please. And if you would, put an I or a Z next to it. So if I know you're in person or Zoom, okay, just let me know. So I'll know who to look for and be prepared for. But please, please sign up. I want you to be a part of this. God bless you. Have a great week.